Hi, welcome back to the Sea Butters channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Nexus 7 car stereo install part 2. Uh, in this video we're going to take a look at some of the software that we have installed, how to get the uh, ignition in the car to turn the Nexus 7 on and off and change some of the sleep settings. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show you uh, some of the changes we've had since the last video. So as you can see, got the power gem wired up. Uh, I've attached the amp control. That's going to send the, the 12 volt signal back down into the amp to tell the amp to turn on. Uh, so I just basically connected the amp wire to a 12 volt source, uh, the ACC source that will turn it back on. Uh, you can see I've got these installed now using uh, some toothpicks, epoxy, and whatever way I could. Uh, to get that on there. The Nexus 7 actually blocked the screw holes for these adapters um, to screw on so I had to customize something but they're the epoxy set up and they're actually pretty stiff. I still need to wait probably 24 more hours before I can put any load bearing on that and I'll probably put a crossbar across here to keep that nice and tight. Um, so uh, over here these two wires I just have on a 12 volt adapter so I can simulate uh, a car battery. So this is the ground, this is the 12 volt. So I'm going to flip the Nexus 7 up and let you see um, what that will do. So right now uh, you can see that it's charging up in that top port. Okay, so what I've done is uh, you can see that it's charging right now off the battery. I'm going to go ahead and, and disconnect this yellow wire to simulate the car being turned off, the key being turned. So if I unplug that, you can now see it says power loss entering low power mode. And what that I've set that up to do is actually turn the screen off. There it goes. Um, Within one minute, it will also turn off the Bluetooth radio and the Wi-Fi radio, uh, which should let the Nexus 7 sit in a lower power state than it could normally. Um, uh, this there's a there's a, the way I'm doing this is with a program called Tasker, and I'm going to show you exactly how I set that up. So I'm going to take this uh, and pretend that the car turned back on, and so I'm just going to connect that power source again. So that's like the key turning. Uh, you'll see that the screen turns back on. Uh, so that's all you need to do when you turn your car on is is that. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at Tasker and I'm going to readjust this camera to kind of get a tighter shot. Hopefully uh, this works out. Let you guys see at home how this works. Okay, so let's go to Tasker. Uh, like I said, available on the Play Store. Go ahead and click on that. And the first thing I did was uh, set up two uh, profiles. One is called Power Any, one is not Power Any. And how you do this is this little plus button down here. You go ahead and push that, and you can set a state. So if you click State, whoops, wrong one. Sorry, let's go back in there. So if you select the plus and then you choose state uh, you can go in and set power and then click power again and you can set a source and the source can be any or AC or USB or wireless um, and I just set it to any because if it's being powered at all it's going to be powered off the car battery so I'm not too worried about what type of power um, so I just set any. So I'm just going to back out of that so I don't mess up my settings. Um, but basically, you choose a power setting, and then you can choose that power setting again, but then the inverse. And what that means is that uh, it will, if it detects that power state, and then if it detects the opposite of that power state, so that's power any and not power any. So if we go into power any, uh, you'll be able to set tasks. So power on tasks. Um, the first thing I do is I set a variable, and uh, let's not worry about this right now. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So when it detects a power source, the first thing it will do is turn the Wi-Fi on, turn the Bluetooth on, 
and set the display timeout to um, eight hours. So I could get in my car, turn it on, and this Nexus 7 is going to stay on for um, eight hours before the screen ever turns off if I don't touch it. So uh, that gives me plenty of time to, you know, make any drive uh, without the screen turning off on me, which is what I prefer. You could obviously change this for your own settings. Um, I'm also setting a power variable to 1. So basically I say this variable power is set to 1. So 1 means power's on in my world because I programmed it that way. So let's go back. Now let's look at what happens when there is no power. So if I unplug or I turn the car off or unplug this power, um, here's the power off task. So the first thing I'm going to do is set that power variable to 0. The variable being zero means power's off, one means power on. Uh, so the first thing I do once the power is removed is pop up. So uh, I just basically give myself a message, hey, this is what's happening. The power's lost. I'm going into low power mode. Uh, it sets the display timeout to seven seconds, which basically is the lowest you can set it. So it will it'll turn off that screen after you turn the key within you know, about seven seconds. Uh, then I actually tell it to wait one minute before turning off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And the reason I do this is sometimes uh, you may turn off your car quickly to, to turn off the engine, but you still want to listen to the radio. So if you're doing anything on the Wi-Fi and you turn, and if you were to turn the key off, um, you would instantly lose your Bluetooth and lose your Wi-Fi. So if you're using any of those services and you just turned your key to turn your engine off, you wouldn't want those to be turned off, you know, immediately because the car's coming right back on. Um, which is another reason why I do this power variable um, because I've got conditions. So it waits one minute and then it's going to turn the Bluetooth off if power state equals zero. So Say that once once the power goes off, it starts this chain of events in, into into process. So even if I turn the car off and then right back on, if I don't set those power variables and make them conditional on those power variables, uh, then basically I'm going to turn the car off for a split second, and it's still going to turn my Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off even if the power came back on. So. Um, I don't want to have the variables fighting each other as different power states happen. So if it, the car goes off, it turns the display off, which isn't a big deal, and then it waits one minute. And then it says turn the Bluetooth off if power equals zero, which means that the power is still off. Which, if it's off, it will turn it off. If I've turned the car back on and within that one minute time frame, it won't turn the Bluetooth off and it won't turn the Wi-Fi off because it's got that conditional set. So how you do that is like if you go into the Bluetooth setting, um, you set this conditional if power equals zero. Uh, that's the only time it would set that off. So. so that's how you set up the tasker settings. So hopefully this has been useful for you. Um, I uh, need to go through the the install of of Nexus uh, with the Elemental X kernel. Uh, basically, you can see it's charged up to 94% here. Uh, that's actually a battery saving mode. I don't want to just you know pump the battery full as it charge it as high as it can go. If I am taking a long drive, you know, and it's just charged all the time. Anytime I'm driving the car, it should be charging. So I don't want to like totally destroy the battery by having it. Uh, on all the time um, so one thing that, that the Elemental X install will let you do is, is set the battery configuration at a lower percentage you can also undervolt uh, the Nexus a little bit and lower the default clock rates uh, I'm just going to be using this as basic music device basic video device so I'm not really concerned about being able to you know do some heavy-duty gaming or anything so I've actually undervolted and underclocked the Nexus 7. And the reason I did that is because in the summer, um, if, if, if your car is, you know, a, a hundred degrees, is in a hundred degree weather, the inside of your car, if you leave it parked in the sun, is going to be, 
you know, 140, 150 degrees in that car if you don't crack a window. So I don't want the, ne the Nexus to be overheating when I get into the car. So um, I've just toned down the settings a little bit to kind of give it uh, a little extra stability in the heat. I may even mount a fan depending on how things go on the back of here in the little cage uh, to keep things a little bit cooler as well. But uh, I don't know if that's necessary or not. I may try it without that for a few months and then see how it does in the summer. So um, this has been part two of the Nexus 7 car install. Um, in the next video I'll show you the Elemental X um, kernel installation procedure. Uh, to get your OTG cable working, I'll show you the OTG settings and um, probably not the next part, but as soon as I get the uh, steering wheel controls, uh, as soon as I get that part in the mail, I will sh also show how to utilize the steering wheel controls and make them work with your car. So this has been part two. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you later. Please subscribe.